What's up, Doritos? Reverend Dave here. All right. Today, we do part three of the Defensive Magic series. This one might be a little shorter because um, basically what I want to touch on today is the tools, correspondences, whatever, the stuff that you'll need to do any kind of, the, of this type of magic. Um, and... Some of this, most of this stuff actually is readily available. You find it in your house, the store, whatever. Some of it is kind of harder to come by. And we're going to go over that in a minute. Uh, so I'm going to start off by giving you a list of stuff. All the ingredients and stuff, basic ingredients. I mean, every recipe, every spell is different. I mean, you, you, you create your own like I do a lot. Or take a spell and tweak it, make it your own, whatever. But there's a hundred recipes out there. But these are a lot of basic ingredients to use in these type of defensive magic spells. So, here's the, the easy to get stuff list. Uh, black thread, vinegar, uh, hot peppers. The hotter the better, obviously. And... I hate super spicy hot peppers. I'm even though I'm half Latino, I'm, jalapenos is about as far as I go. <laughs> but hot peppers, uh, your own urine, uh, dried dog shit that easily crumbles into a powder, uh, black pepper, pins and needles, any size, really. Um, Pen and paper, uh, and black pen preferably. Small jars or any freezable container, basically. Enough to, you know, put your paper in and fill it with water type of thing. If you're doing a freezer spell. Um, black candles, salt, any kind really. Uh, a wand or your two fingers to direct energy. Uh, rusty nails, lemons, limes, uh, honey, moon water, mirrors. Uh, any size mirror really it could be small, wall mounted, big, whatever. Um, amulets and talismans. So that's pretty easy stuff. The harder to come by stuff, it, it depends, I suppose. Uh, like graveyard dirt. Now, I don't have any graveyard dirt on hand. I, uh, one of my friends has some that I could use, but it, it, supposedly there's a, a method or a tradition when you collect graveyard dirt. I don't know how true that is or if that's you know whatever maybe one day I'll talk about that in, in a video but graveyard dirt coffin nails poppets sorry uh, poppets not really hard to come by but you you have to make them you know uh, Basically, and, and it's a whole other thing as well. And uh, there, you know, a poppet is just basically a small doll, and you can fill it with your targets, items, and stuff like that. And I'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, Florida water. Florida water is not hard to come by. So you just make it. It just contains alcohol, basically. It's just you know, um, and that's good protection spray. Uh, doom oil, once again, like I mentioned in my last video, doom oil is it's D U M E and it stands for death unto my enemies. And same thing with cursing oil, or black scorpion oil. There's, there's ingredients to it. You can buy it already pre made in some places. Uh, you can learn how to make it yourself, whatever. I don't have that recipe, so I'm not going to give it to you. And then there's servitors, and that's like I said, and that's a whole nother 
video for another time, and I'm going to talk about that more in a minute. Uh, but those are just some of the tools. So now, what do you do with that stuff? What kind of spells in defense of magic? And I spoke about this before. Um, there's many types, you know, so I'm going to just try to touch on a few and kind of break them down a little bit. And I'll break them down even more in my in part four video when we actually do some spells and stuff like that. I'm going to show you a couple things, but we'll break them down more. But just a quick summary, I guess. Um, sour jar. You know, to, to inconvenience somebody. And then the opposite of that is a sweetness jar. And that's to help somebody change their attitude in a positive way towards you. Um, protection jars, obviously, for the home, for your car, for a particular room, for yourself, whatever. You can carry them on your neck, put them on the shelf, whatever. I have several. I have some one buried in my front yard by the door. Uh, and that's super easy one to, to, to make as well. It's just your own pee, rusty nails, you know, and buried out there. Uh, prosperity jars for wealth and happiness. Good to have. I have a couple of those. Um, protection jars. You know, once again, like I said, for home, car, room. You know, things like that. Those are just the, some of the jars to make. You know, there's love jars. There's so many. You could do whatever. Uh, and then the spells, like, like God, there's, you know, there's a few. Like, there's, let's start with cord cutting. We haven't touched on that really yet. And cord cutting, and once again, I'm going to get more into that in part four video. But cord cutting is basically when you're trying to break the bonds of a certain relationship between yourself and somebody else whether it's a toxic relationship or a bad breakup or whatever that's what cord cutting is um pretty simple to do you know it's it, of course you want to do it right but it's pretty simple to do um freezer spells once again we talked a lot about that one of the most easy and effective spells i think uh when you direct your energy into it like it's great. Binding spells, very similar to freezer, freezer spell. Banishing spells. Uh, hot foot powder is, it's basically designed to make somebody leave the premises right away. Like if you're trying to kick somebody out or whatever. I mean, the name kind of says it all. Hot foot powder, like pew. Wile E. Coyote, just pew. You know, type of thing. And you could put that and you can make that in a spray, uh, a satchel, a powder, different ways to do that. Um, oils, once again, like I, I talked about the doom oil for a minute, and, and there's cursed oil, black scorpion oil, whatever. And oils are basically made to dress your candle. Okay, and one of my videos way back, I showed you how to dress a candle, the way I do it anyways. For me, when I dress a candle, I don't have a candle, I'll use my pen. When you want to banish something, it's always away from you. So I start from the bottom up to banish something. When you're trying to receive something and you're asking for something, then you want to start from the top down until you receive it to you. Is the way I do it. So, I mean, you do it however you want or whatever. Um, so the oils. Now, once again, getting in a little more, I guess, advanced. I don't know what you want to call it. But we'll talk about poppets and voodoo dolls for a minute. Harder to come by. Poppets you make yourself, obviously. and But the thing is, though, in order them for really to work well, you need items from your target. Like, say, like it's clothing. And make the doll out of the clothing. And then put stuff inside it such as nail clippings, hair, whatever saliva, whatever you can find of your target to put inside. Now, uh, and there's voodoo dolls and stuff like that, but if, I mean, unless you get blessed with one by a 
priestess or something, you know, then cool, but I doubt that's going to happen. Um, my daughter, I have a 27 year old daughter, gorgeous, but she hand makes poppets and hers are really big. They're like, God, I think they're like 18 to 24 inches tall and out of super cute material, whatever you want, she'll make them for you. Custom made. I think they're 40 bucks pretty big and I'll try to sit, give you a link. I'm not going to do an interview with her one of these days. Um, but yeah, so there's poppets. Like I said, it's a little more, you know, whatever. And then I'm going to touch on this for a minute because I want to do a whole video on it next month. But servitors. Now, a servitor, it's a little more advanced, I guess you'd call it. But what it is it's basically an object that you really love or whatever. It could be anything. The blacks will talk about more about it later. But you, an object that you actually bring to life, sort of like an imaginary friend or mine right now, like it is a fetch kitty. Um, and you give these, you breathe life into them you give them commands, offerings, attention, and you give them a lifespan. Like I said, we're gonna get way into that later on. But I'm gonna introduce you to mine. Right now, he's just a fetch kitty. But this is Sam, and he's really mad at me because I haven't given him too much attention lately. And I need him Sam and not Salem because I swear to God, if I hear one more black cat named Salem, I'm gonna puke. But that's Sam. So, and like I said, I'm gonna do a whole video on this. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be fetches, servitors, egregores, entities, just the whole thing and what's it about and what they do and stuff like that. So, and a resource to study on that. Um, okay, so those are the tools and the stuff you need to do these spells and things like that. So now I wanna to touch, I, and this can kind of even be considered in the warding department, but I wanted to wait till the tool segment to talk about this. But I'll talk about charms, amulets, and talismans. What's the difference? What are they? Okay, basically a charm, and you, you probably guys, yeah, when I was a kid, I had one, but like a, like a rabbit's foot or a four leaf clover, horseshoe, you know, upside down or whatever. They're, they're charms, they're made to for catching good luck, for bringing good luck to you. That's what a charm is. And an amulet, basically been around for thousands of years and it's they're made for protection and to ward off negative energy, evil spirits, and sometimes even illness. Um, one of my favorites that I wear constantly, as you can probably see in my videos, is my tiger's eye. <laughs> tiger's eye ring. I also have a Hamsa bracelet, the evil eye, whatever. But those are amulets. And then talismans are whatever, like say you've been given a pendant from your great grandma that you just cherish. Okay, that's a talisman that you energize yourself and you wear it for your specific whatever it is that you're doing. And talismans are very sacred to the owner and they need to be charged magically by you, by the owner. And how you enchant, charm, energize, whatever you wanna call it, consecrate your talisman is up to you. It's a personal thing. Do how you want. You can just go, like every full moon, what I do, I take all my trinkets, all my stuff, my pentacle and crystal, whatever, and I put them under the moonlight and meditate and just soak up that moon energy and charge them that way. You can put them in your hand. Meditate on it. Fill it with your energy. 
that's what it is. It's sacred to you. Say like a rose quartz. You're looking for love, and you're in rose quartz is the, the stone of love. And you take that, you carry it with you, you charm it, you, you energize it, and you carry it with you. Uh, it could be any pendant, a pinnacle, uh, whatever you want. It doesn't matter, you know. Um, so basically, those are just the tools in this type of thing, in defensive magic and, and, and whatever, that you'll need to do these things. So my next video, so the part four, I'm going to be talking more, a little more in depth, I think, about these things. And I'm going to show you how to do two or three things. If I can, if I can fit them in, I might have to cut it down. I don't know. And then I'll end the series, part five, with the hex breaking, curse removal, return to sender stuff and how to do that and things like that in the part five. So, you guys, sorry about that. Thank you once again for watching. Um, I'm hoping this helps you. Please leave comments, positive comments. Um, and remember... Do no harm, take no shit, love ya.